teenager growing up in Kumase, where the predominant tribe is Ashanti, and I wasn't Ashanti. I was from Adam, which is I'm still from Adam, which is a Dagwe tribe. So we were in a class, and in Ghana, if you live in a particular town, you study the language of the town in your languages class. So we have a Ghanaian language called Chi, which we were studying in school. And in our class, in the Chi class, we had a test. And one of the test questions was, what does the word Awu mean? And there were four options for the answer. Option one was Mami, which means mother. Option two was Sewa, which means auntie. Option three was Nanaba, which means grandmother. And I can't seem to recall the fourth option. And so, you know, I wasn't sure of the answer. Neither was the people around me, including my crush. And so we went into a conclave to find what the right answer was. I suggested mommy, which means grandmother. And my crush looked at me like, are you seriously this dumb? And I made me shook. So I asked what she thought the answer was. And she said, duh, it's obviously Nanaba, which means grandmother. And you know, in Kumase, a lot of people, young people, hear their mothers call their grandmothers Awo. So in our young in their young minds, they thought if your grandma you call your grandmother Awo, then it means that probably Awo refers to grandmother. And so everybody around us agreed with the answer. And I wasn't quite sure if she was right or not. Because I have a natural gift for learning languages, even though I'm quite bad at speaking them. And so um, I thought about it for a while and decided to let my insecurity win. So I wrote the answer she said was the right one, which was Nanaba, which means grandmother. And when the test results came back, it turned out my earlier answer was right and our answer was wrong. So I had that question wrong. And you know, I still have to score a point with my crush. So I went to her during the break and I was like, you know, my answer was right, right? And she was like, no, you were not right. If your answer was right, you have written it. Because you wrote the answer you thought was right, it means that the answer you thought was right, which is an number for the answer you thought. And so I lost a chance to be with my crush because I wasn't confident enough in an answer I had. And so I was 14 at the time. Five years later, I moved out of Kumase to the media capital of Ghana, which is also the capital of Ghana, Accra. I started working in the media space. I was working in entertainment media as an entertainment journalist. And let me tell you a little bit about the entertainment industry in Ghana. The entertainment industry in Ghana runs on vibes and inshallah. We turn a lot of adversity into assets on sets. So that's why when you watch a Ghanaian movie, you see the ending description to God be the glory. Because it takes a lot of work. I think not all hero wear capes, but we should wear cape. When I say we, I mean we the famous actors. Or oh, I was joking, I mean I'm, if I was a famous actor, you know me. I've been in just one movie in my whole life. Just one scene. And if I was a famous person, if I've been said that I made a cameo appearance in the movie, but because I'm not, in Ghana movie parlance, we say you've uh, done work and pass. Work and pass. That's work and pass. <laughs> so, my work and pass role was in this film, which I won't tell you the title because you'll be disappointed if you watch it. <laughs> The reason being that I was in a court scene and I was a member of the gallery in the court. So if you were the movie, I don't want to recognize me. But it was big to me when it happened. And that scene took about two hours to shoot. But on screen, it was like five minutes. You know, in 
like I said earlier, the way the movie industry runs, I don't run like it does in Hollywood. In Hollywood, film studios are big and you are able to control the lighting at any time. But in Ghana, films are shot in homes and hotels. And with homes and hotels, you don't have total control over the lighting. That's why most Ghanaian movies are shot at night, from maybe 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. That way you can control the lighting uh, because there won't be sunlight to distract your lighting. So this court scene I was in was shot at night, even though it's a day scene. And um, I told you it took two hours to shoot. So I went home the next morning, very tired, and called my boss. I was I told you I was a journalist at the time. Entertainment journalist. The only reason I was in that film was because my friend who had, who had been in the industry was a producer of the film. And so I was on set with him and I was like, Nene, can you sit in the court for me? And I did that. So I called my boss the next day, too tired from shooting that scene the night, and told him I couldn't make it to work because I was sick. I mean, I feel sickness. And he accepted my excuse and Later that evening, he called me. I think he had figured out that I was lying. And said, Will I be well in two days? And I said, I probably will be. And so he told me that there was a, an assignment that required my, my presence. The assignment was some actors were going to the then the seat of government in Ghana, which was the castle, to present an award they've won to the president at the time. You know, there's this movie awards in Africa or African Movie Academy Awards. And some Ghanaian film had won, which means that the act actresses in the film had won. The, I think there was a sound person from the film who later on became a big movie, a music star in Ghana, EL. There was a producer of the film also won an award. So they had gone to the castle to present the award. And since I was an entertainment journalist, I was supposed to go with them to cover it for my newspaper I was writing for. And when the day of the assignment came, I went to the castle wearing the nicer shirt I owned at the time. I mean, it was a gray, gray shirt. I had zero fashion sense at the time. I don't have that much fashion sense now, but at least now it's a little better. <laughs> so, um, when we were on set, one of the actresses who had won the award, when we were on uh, the cast, one of the actresses who had won the award didn't show up to do the presentation. And that was uh, at the time the most famous actress in Ghana, Takia Pia. And the organizer of the presentation told the president at the time that, no, he was the vice president at the time, John Mahama. He later on became the president of Ghana. He told the vice president at the time, John Mahama, that, um, Jackie Apia couldn't make it because she was on set. And this presentation, mind you, was being done at 12 noon. And like I told you earlier, movies are shot at night in Ghana. So during the day, Jackie Apia is likely to be free, even if she was on set. And so, I think she lied to the president, didn't she? So when I went back to the office, I told my boss that, I think that Kiapi lied to the president or the vice president, John Mahama. And my boss was like, okay, so this is a bigger story than the presentation. So he wrote the headline, that Kiapi swerves Mahama. And asked me to write a story about that Kiapi lying to the vice president. And the moment I started working on the story, I had to assemble facts about how movies are made in Ghana. And then it hit me that she may not have lied because even though she, I, she was shooting from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m., during the time, during the day time, she would need her rest. And so she may have needed rest when she said she was on set. But I didn't put that in the story. Neither did I tell my boss that. I think I might have mentioned that to my boss and he was like, oh, I should leave that fact out of the story. So I left that fact out of the story, thinking that I didn't go to work the day I went on set because I was too tired to go to work. And here is somebody who had just come from set and probably will go back to set 
and so she might have been pretty tired, but I still didn't put that in the story. And the story came out. And guess who called me? Dakiapia called me. And she wasn't angry, she was just disappointed. And guess what? She has seen me on the set two days before. The movie I said I was in, yeah, she was in that movie. And she said, so you know we are in the process of shooting a film? And I said, yes. And she said, let me give you a little education. If an actress or actor says she's on set or he's on set, that doesn't necessarily mean that he has a camera on them at the time they are speaking. It just means that they are in the process of making a film. And the break you take in the process of making a film is part of making the film. Because you need to rest when you are working. I mean, I knew all this earlier, but I didn't speak when I was supposed to. And so, what does that mean? I didn't know. When you know something and you don't voice out your knowledge, it's as good as not knowing. You know, in Ghana, our culture promotes silence, especially silence to an elderly or an authority person. My crush when I was in DSS was an authority figure to me because she was somebody whose approval I craved. And so I didn't speak up when I needed to. And probably I have any approval if I had stick to my answer. My boss at work is an authority figure over me. And I needed this approval, and so I didn't speak up when it mattered. And guess what? In all both of those cases, my not speaking up showed one thing that I lacked knowledge. It doesn't matter that in my head I thought I had it. So this is why you have a voice. This is why you need to use your voice. You know, our voices are unique for reasons. You know, your what becomes your voice is an air that goes through your lungs and the scientific process, I'm not a scientist, the scientific process that the air goes through to come out as voice influences what comes out as your voice and in every person the process is different. Your experience that becomes your voice is different. Your experience that becomes your thoughts are different and so it is important that those experiences be communicated to your world the reason why our country is not growing at the rate it is is because people are afraid of dissent dissenting is not disrespect dissenting is a mark of wisdom Knowing something is wrong and voicing out your dissent shows courage and shows wisdom. As a young Ghanaian, it is time for us to grow to a point where we will not be afraid to use our unique voices. Use the unique voice. That is why you have it.